Today, I wanna to show you a very cool data view query. Imagine that you have a company A and in company A, you want to see all the meetings relating to company A. But every time when you have a meeting, which is this middle note, you don't want to add an additional metadata field called up or company to specify that this needs to go to company A. No, we don't want that. We just want Obsidian to automatically detect that the participant or participants is part of company A. And if this participant Alice is part of company A, this meeting note should be sent to company A's note. And we can see in Alice's note, we specified that there already, that a company is company A. So what Obsidian does when you create this meeting is it goes into the participants, it goes to their pages, it scrolls down to company, and it sees that Alice is working for company A, therefore this meeting note should be sent to company A's page. This is the data view query that we'll be talking through today. Today we are in the Evergreen Vault. For those of you that don't know what the Evergreen Vault is, this is just my Obsidian setup that combines the Work Vault, if you've seen it on my YouTube channel, and the Daily to Yearly Journal Rollup Vault. It mashes those two together to give you the best of both. And I'm also trying to push in a lot of theory into this workspace that you can then buy. So this is where I am trying to build up a knowledge base that people can then buy and use and just give their Obsidian journey a little bit of a head start. This is also where I will have information and guidelines and walkthroughs as to new functionality that I find. And I want to make it as simple as possible. So this is where I'll just collect everything. And today's video is gonna be a little bit of a shorter video. This is a problem that I came across while consulting one of my clients. And he had a very interesting use case, which I'm gonna to try to explain it to you and hopefully you understand it and see where you can use it elsewhere. We have Alice. Alice works at company A. And for these two, for Alice and for company, they each have their own note. So for Alice, we have Alice note. And in Alice, for instance, for this scenario, we want to see all the meetings Alice is involved in. But the metadata properties, one of the metadata properties would be company, and it would show that she works for company A. So this would be one of the metadata properties at the top, which shows that Alice works for company A. And if we go back to company A, company A will also have its own note. And this is also where we would just like to see all the meetings that is related to company A. Now the client's problem was he doesn't want to fill in a metadata field in the meeting note every single time for company A. He wants Obsidian to automatically detect that Alice is in the meeting as a participant and therefore Obsidian should know to send that meeting to company A's note. Now meeting note might look something like this. We have today's date and the meeting note name might be meeting with Alice. We have the created metadata field and then the original one on how we would originally or usually do it is we would have company, company A, participants, Alice, and this metadata property would then send it to company A and the participants metadata field, which has Alice, would send it to Alice. But there's a way that we don't need to fill in this. We can take it out and Obsidian will then have to go look at, okay, who was the participant? It was Alice. Obsidian then goes to Alice and it goes and looks at the company metadata field and it sees that Alice is part of company A. And therefore Obsidian then goes back to the meeting and knows that this meeting should also go to company A. So the final outcome with a metadata property that does not specify on the meeting that this relates to company A. It just means that it will still go to company A. So this meeting will show up under meetings in company A 
as well as in Alice because of data view. What happens is this meeting gets sent to the company A and it also gets sent to Alice. Visual representation, one less metadata field needed and finding out that Obsidian's data view is quite handy sometimes. This is a simplistic example, but I can really imagine that there's other places, let's say for study notes or for team projects, or um, I can just imagine that there's multiple places where you could potentially use this type of functionality. So let's see what it looks like. If we go back to the problem note, I created a note to explain this problem and also to show you how it's used. And this will reside in, if you go to the Evergreen Vault, if you're interested in buying it, it would be under Obsidian Functionality and Guides. And you can see that data view how to automatically link a meeting to the correct company based on who attended the meeting. And the steps will all be here. If we go to the meeting, <laughs> not the meeting, if we go to the note, the example pages that we'll use is company A. So let's quickly create company A. And company A's note might look something like this. We have meetings with people who's associated with this company. So this is the thing that I'm trying to explain now and all the other usual things that you'll find, sub projects, meetings, tasks and questions, sprints, whatever other metadata field you want. But the one that we're interested in is meetings with people who's associated with this company. If we go back, we've created company A. Let's create Alice. Let's just create a people template. So we have tags, type, person, birthday, do, 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 do. You can see that there's no company. So let's create a company metadata field at the top. So you can either do it in the editing version where you just type in company and you say quotes company A to show that Alice works for company A. You can see it pops up here or if that is maybe too confusing, we can take it out and go to reading mode and you can just see you can add a property here as well. So let's add a property, we say company, press enter and let's type company, let's block quotes, company A. So this will tie company A to Alice. Wonderful. Now let's say we create a meeting note. And this is the meeting note that we create. On this specific day, we have meeting with Alice and Alice is from company A, for instance. We create a meeting note template and we have a nice talk with Alice about her working at Compene, company A. Now, the only thing that we need to do now is we just need to say that Alice was a participant in this meeting. And this can actually go to the summary portion. Now, the code that we have in the company A should automatically detect that this meeting should pop up there, even though we don't have an app or company specified to pull it in. So this is the beauty of this. It means that it can go and look at all the notes and it goes and looks at the participants and it Obsidian data view goes into Alice's note and it sees, oh, Alice works for company A. Therefore, if Alice is a participant, we should pull this meeting in to company A. Now, if we go back to company A, we can see that this meeting is pulled in. We have the file, we have created, we have the participants, and we even have the participant.company. And the data view query looks like this. I'm going to explain it to you. Again, you don't really need to understand data view. I don't even understand it. I just get it to work. And if you spend enough time with it, you start picking up what the words mean. And sometimes it's intuitive, other times like this flatten, you don't know 100% what it does, but it works and you can play around with it. You can mold it and change it to other scenarios to see how you can make it work for yourself. So data view, these blocks just specifies that this is a data view query and you need to put data view. 
Then we want a table to return notes. So this is just the table that it returns. And what do we want to see in a table? We want to see the created date. We want to see participants. And then we want to see the company of the participant. You can see that we have created participants, participants.company. Then flatten participants as participant. This just goes to every note and goes and looks at the participants. Uh, I'm not really sure what flatten does, but it needs to be here. And then the important part comes with the where clause. So the where says where participants.company contains this file link. And we can see that this file link is company A. Now what it actually does is that data query goes and looks at participants.company. So it knows to go into Alice and dot company and goes and searches for what is this value at company A. Now what is this value at company metadata field? And it sees that it's company A. So participant.company, we know that Alice is the participant in that meeting. The company of Alice is company A. And that needs to be equal to this file.link, which is company A. So this where clause is where the magic happens. And then we just have an extra one where it contains top meeting. So flatten participants is just to make sure that this part works. That's the, the beauty of it. I think this is pretty cool. It is not necessary, but you can see that DataView is quite dynamic in a sense. And I can imagine that for other use cases, this might even be more valuable. I haven't particularly found the most useful use cases, but I think each person has an idea of things that they want to do with Obsidian. And this just paves the way for data view just to become more and more useful. So again, we have Alice working at company A. Now we can just go to the meeting notes and we just need to specify Alice. Obsidian goes back to Alice when they're specified in the participants in the meeting. It goes and looks at the company metadata field. It goes back to the meeting and it knows to go and place that meeting in company A. So it's not a direct data view link anymore. It goes through levels. So it goes through what is the participant. It goes to that participant note. It goes into the participant notes metadata. And then it goes back and says, yes, cool. We now know that this note needs to go to company A as well. I hope this makes sense and please share in the comments where you think this might be useful or the shortcomings of it. Because for me, I do see some shortcomings in this specific scenario. If I go to the Obsidian functionality and guides, go to how to automatically link, you can see we've discussed the problem. We've gone through the example pages. We have the data view query here that does the magic. And the last one is important limitations to consider. If a person changes companies, past meetings won't show up anymore. So that's one consideration. There's a couple of ways around it, which I'm not going to dive in too much because this is a specific use case in order for you guys to use somewhere else. So there is some shortcomings. There's also some, uh, I won't say issues because you can handle multiple companies. So you can make it a list and the query does work with lists, but it would then show up in both companies. So then you need to be very clear that if you're gonna have company A and company B, a specific meeting would then be sent to company A and B. So that's just something you need to keep in mind. And yeah, the last thing just says, if there's only one company that this person is ever going to work for or related to, this solution works pretty damn well. So that's it for this short video. I'll be doing way more of these because I find these solutions quite interesting. Hope you find value out of them as well. And again, uh, I have consulting sessions. My clients are finding tremendous value. Also have an evergreen vault that you can buy, which will have all of these functional guides and theories that you can go through, which 
should give you an easy way to incorporate more advanced features of Obsidian in a congestible way. I'll also link the YouTube videos related to these guides as well. So I think this is a pretty cool product. All right, strength and honor, my brethren, and see you in the next video.